Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to town hall number one for DeKalb County Public Schools Comprehensive Master Plan. We're really excited to have you here. Before we get started in earnest, I just want to mention a couple of logistical uh, issues. Uh, the first is um, if you need a translation of the presentation for tonight, we're, we're relying on uh, captions and subtitles for uh, the main part of the presentation. And if you're in Microsoft Teams, you can find the little gear wheel uh, it should be in the upper right of your screen and you can go click on that and select the language that you'd like it translated to for tonight. Uh, we're only doing English Spanish uh, translation. Um, I will say though that we have uh, multiple interpreters uh, participating in this presentation and they will be able to translate and respond to any questions that are submitted by the Q&A. Um, I'll speak more in a few minutes, but first I'd like to hand it over to our wonderful uh, new superintendent, Mrs. Cheryl Watson Harris, and she's gonna welcome you all and, uh, and then we'll get started. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jared, and, and welcome to everyone. Welcome to town hall number one for our comprehensive master plan Think Big initiative. We just want to uh, acknowledge all of our phenomenal board members uh, that are here with us this evening, as well as a staff on every level of the organization. So thank you so much. Thank you to our parents and our community stakeholders that have joined us. Uh, we also want to acknowledge uh, Barbara Crum, uh, the president of Perkins and Will, uh, and her entire uh, amazing team that have been such great partners, and we're so excited to be partnering with them in this very, very important initiative. Um, as well as Mr. Malou from our team who's on uh, and, and uh, just thank him for his leadership. Uh, as a school district, we're just so excited to be moving into this next phase of our comprehensive master plan initiative. Uh, as we continue to complete our building assessments, build our demographic data and collect fee feedback from our surveys, it's also time for us to begin our district-wide engagement, starting with this very town hall. So we're so excited to be moving into this phase. Uh, we will be following up this uh, town hall with multiple town halls, as well as meetings with the various advisory committees that exist in our district um, and other internal and external stakeholder meetings throughout the district. Uh, as we all know, the comprehensive master plan process is intended to first uh, provide a district-wide long-term facilities master plan uh, in November of 2021. It's also meant to inform the comprehensive redistricting efforts and mm -hmm. lastly uh, to inform effective and equitable allocation um, of resources. So with that, uh, we want to just again offer our appreciation and gratitude. We want to thank you again for being here. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to uh, Mr. Maloof. Thank you so much. Thank you, Superintendent Watson Harris. We appreciate you being with us this evening and thank you for the wonderful greetings. Um, on behalf of, of Mr. Estel, our Chief Operating Officer, our whole uh, team internally and our Perkins and Will team, I would like to also welcome everyone and thank you for taking the time to be with us. Uh, this is where we get into the exciting portion of the Comprehensive Master Plan. Uh, tonight's purpose is to bring everyone up to date, give you a good overview of what we're doing with the Comprehensive Master Plan. The Perkins and Will team, along with their partners, will be facilitating and hosting this event for us tonight. Uh, we do have a chat with a Q&A area for you. We ask that you please take the time to put any questions that you have about the comprehensive master plan there. We know that you may have uh, questions on other topics such as opening school uh, or other topics. Uh, we will be responding just to the comprehensive master plan questions. And uh, again, please use that Q&A area for that uh, and we will publish them out and try to answer as many as we can on, on the live event tonight. Again, we thank everyone for being here. This is a community event. Uh, everyone that is participating is part of our community with this and the comprehensive master plan we are very proud to bring to you. So at this time, I will turn it over, turn it back over to Jared and uh, and let the, let him and uh, uh, Barbara Crum introduce their team and take it away. Well, as everybody said, we're uh, very excited to hear from all of you tonight and we really appreciate uh, you're taking the time to join us 
As I said earlier, my name is Jared Serwer. I'm an architect with Perkins and Will and a member of the team along with Jacobs Engineering and Cropper GIS uh, that has been engaged by DeKalb County Schools to develop the comprehensive master plan. In addition to me, uh, tonight you'll be hearing from my colleague Barbara Crum and, uh, and Stephen Brown. Um, before we get started, I'd like to emphasize that we really want to hear from you. And I want to make sure that you're all aware of several ways you can engage with us both tonight and throughout this process. The first is the CMP website. We've collected a number of questions in advance via the email address that's on that website. Uh, next slide, John. And um, we'll respond uh, to as many as we can tonight. Um, others will, will need to be answered as we get further into the process. We just may not have the answers just yet. Um, and, um, and we'll also be answering things by updating our FAQ on the website. So please continue to engage with us, check the website and, and stay up to date. Um, throughout this presentation, uh, as Noel mentioned, you can submit questions via the chat function in Teams. Um, and then also uh, for this presentation tonight, we're also um, going to try some live polling. So uh, if you're able to, please uh, pull up www.menti.com. That's also the um, number four on the screen uh, and type in the code that's listed there. Um, that should take you to two polling questions. One of the first one is is to get a sense of who's attending tonight, what what clusters are you affiliated with or not? And, and the second one is just to get a sense for uh, how people are feeling about uh, what they'd like to see out of the comprehensive master plan. We'll revisit these polls a couple of times throughout the night, and it's just a way for us to kind of gauge um, what what's on people's mind and, and who's participating tonight. So thank you very much with that. Um, the last thing I'll say is that uh, this meeting is being recorded and the recording will be made available on the CMP website along with this presentation. Uh, as I said earlier, we do have uh, Spanish language interpreters for the Q&A portion of things and uh, translations of the presentation will be provided on the website uh, after this. Thanks, John. And with that, I'll hand it over to Barbara Crum, my colleague from Perkins and Will. John, you want to go to the next slide, please? Um, like everyone has said, I am delighted to be here. We've been working on this really since early November and we've had wonderful feedback from everybody in the district. And I have learned so much about the district and sort of the interesting, progressive and really fascinating and wonderful people throughout your district, throughout your schools. We'll tell you a little bit more how we sort of interface with everyone. But as Jared said, we have two sort of interactive polls for you. And this is the first one. And we'll keep putting up the mentee address through the whole PowerPoint. So if you don't get it right now, it will continue to show up on these slides. But do, if you wouldn't mind, please put in which cluster you're in, because we'd love to know where we're getting our participation from. And we're going to try and reach out to those who don't participate tonight to make sure that we get the voices from all around the district. So during the presentation, please go ahead and put in where you're from. And then the next slide, which is even more important to us, John, you want to go to the next one, is this is a mentee, another mentee poll for us. We'd love to know what you want to see come out of the master plan. We just put some words in here sort of as ticklers to start, but put in here anything you think. And if you can put it in, in a short phrase, that's great. And at the end, you'll see the things that people said most will be the biggest in Brent. It's sort of I'm sure you all have done a lot of you this word cloud, but we really want to know what is the most important thing you want to see come out of this master plan because we want to hear what what's important and where we should be going with this. Next slide, please. I feel like uh, the superintendent was so much more eloquent than I can be, but just to reiterate really what we're doing. As most of you know, we're really trying to look at the facilities across the district and we're trying to optimize the uses and the efficiency of all these facilities. And we'll be looking at, you know, capacity in schools. We'll be looking at the future demographics. Cropper and, and his group are the ones who are doing the demographics. They're looking at the enrollments now and the enrollments out in the next 10 years from 2020 to 2030 to begin to help us plan. We'll also be looking at the condition of the schools. We have people walking through and basically we want to end up with a plan that really establishes the systematic, the system wide goals. We want this to be a real look at equity across the district and really have a, a system wide strategic goal to this master plan. And most of all, have a community wide consensus and we will work towards that through the entire process. Next slide, please. Um, just to tell you sort of where we are in the process, there's sort of four main tasks as we've broken it up to, to sort of say the pieces and parts of it. Uh, the first task is really the inventory and analysis phase. And during this, we're, we do have a group from 
from Jacobs of engineers and architects who are walking through every facility, and we call it the facility condition assessment phase. They will do a report on every facility, the condition, the replacement costs, the renovation or repair costs. And then similarly, we have another group of architects walking through every school who are doing an educational suitability assessment, seeing how the school stands up as opposed to the number of classrooms, the size of the classrooms, enough conferencing space, an auditorium, the cafeteria, the size of the cafeteria, all of those things that correlate with the ed specs. And the third thing in this assessment phase is obviously the forecast, and that's the dem demographers who are looking at the, the long range growth in the district. Um, the second phase that we're right in the middle of, and you are part of, thank you, is the stakeholder meetings. We are reaching out. We have met with some of the leadership of the district, with the superintendent and board members. We'll continue to meet with the different uh, regional superintendents and the various uh, district groups of the arts and the athletics and curriculum and instruction all the way through. We've met with numbers of internal stakeholders, but the most important thing to us now is really getting the external stakeholders. And we are meeting with every principal and every PAC, or we're at least trying to. And if we haven't met with your PAC, please um, reach out. We or reach out to your principal because we have sent um, emails to all of the principals. Um, we are, as I said, those orange things. We are in those phases right now. The third and fourth phase of the master plan include developing options. Once we have assessed all our information, we'll begin to develop options and we will present them to you and present them uh, to the community and get feedback. And eventually we'll put this all in a report that by the summer, hopefully we've got the consensus and we'll put this report together. And I think the next slide shows this timeline to reinforce this. John, next slide. This really goes with the previous slide. As I said to you, we are in this assessment phase and this is our first town hall. We'd like to come to the community at the end of every month just to give you an update of where we're doing what we're doing. Hopefully we will spend the month of March putting together everything we found out in November, December and, Jan and January and begin to put it all together and then report to you the end of March what we found, our findings. And then in April, develop some options and come back to you with options in April. And I think we'd like to come back in virtual town halls, but also meet with each each cluster in each district so that we get the on the ground sort of input from everybody across the district. Come to you with the options, what we think are possible options, and then get your input. And hopefully by the end of May, have some final options that have a consensus that is countywide. Then we, from that, we will take all that information. We'll write a report to go to the board and go to the um, become a resolution in the end of July and then those projects will be what we are talk about in this BLOSS in November. We're walk, working towards the November SPLOSS and want to get most of those decisions made by July. So that's, I hope that explains you sort of where we are. And I know there have been some questions about the timeline on the um, website. And in fact, the timeline, the original timeline on the website, we tried to uh, stick to that because of COVID and lots of other issues about the conversation about reopening schools, we've had to push out a little bit. We have changed the calendar on the website because I continue to look at it. We're trying to keep it as up to date as possible. A few things are out of our control, but we're trying like everything else. Um, just to tell you to date, again, you know, to try and get the community touch points where we'd love you to interface with us is we do have the website. Please keep looking at the website. And as I say, we keep trying to update that schedule so that we will be on time and really explain to you where we are. There are two surveys on the website. There's a Think Big survey, which is really sort of district wide asking your questions about the district, about the master plan, about what's most important to you in the master plan. There's also a school specific survey. These surveys will stay up for a couple months, so please um, get your constituents, get everyone you know to answer them. We're trying to get as much feedback as we can. Um, the other thing, as I mentioned to you, we're doing right now is the facility condition assessments. And in fact, we finished 116 out of the 132 of those. And we're also doing the educational suitability assessments, walking through with the architects and looking at the sort of uh, matching of, ma of the ed specs to the to what's really in the schools and we're almost finished those. I think we have one more to do next week, but we're completing those. Each of these things, will, a report will come out from each of these assessments and we will send that report back to the principals and back to the PACs to look at and make sure that we really captured everything they said to us and all of the things that were pointed out. If, they, if we didn't capture something, we'll go back and walk through again and edit those reports. And again, those reports will be available online. We hope, as I said, by the end of March to have all that pulled together and be able to present it to you. 
The other thing that I found wonderful has been our principal interviews, our PAC interviews. We've had a great time learning from every school about their school, about what they need, but about what they're doing too. So we've completed 48 principal interviews. We have sent out an invitation, I think, to every principal. And we have a number of them scheduled, but we're having a hard time because people are so I'm busy with getting the return to school. We haven't been able to get all the principals to respond. So we're not giving up. We're going to continue and talk to every one of them before we finish. The other thing we've gotten the PAC interviews, we've gotten 52 of those completed. And similarly, we're reaching out to every PAC and are sending every PAC that we're aware of, we are sending an invitation to. And we're beginning to get those all back to. Um, not only do we want to hear from all the school constituents and all the stakeholders in the various schools, just to make sure that we've really gotten the full picture of the county, we are reaching out to economic development groups, we're reaching out to civic organizations and very community, uh, a number of your sort of city governments and county organizations, whatever, anybody who has some input. And in fact, we're even trying to work, reach out to some church groups in the areas where we haven't gotten much feedback to make sure that we really try and touch everybody in the district. Next slide, please. This is just our, to date, input from the Think Big survey. We have a dashboard where we're trying to collect all the information we get. And what this shows is you can see which region we're getting the most most responses from. So thank you Lakeside, thank you that cluster, thank you the ones we're getting from. But please encourage people in your cluster to go to the website, answer the surveys, because we really want to get equal participation across the district. It helps us make informed decisions. And again, this information will be available on our website eventually when it all gets in there and you can look, you know, into any cluster and you can see the kind of comments we've gotten. Next slide, please. Um, just a little bit, you know, we're in the process, as I said, we hope to have the majority of this stuff all pulled together by the end of March. But I just wanted to share with you the things that we've heard. I've gone through all of the responses we've gotten from the surveys online so far and tried to pull what the consensus was. And I sort of have put here the things that we've heard the most. And basically we've heard about equity across the district. We've heard how important it is, you know, that the South, the North, the East, the West, that we, were, we treat all of the areas the same. There's a lot of conversation about how much everyone loves their neighborhood schools and how strong the neighborhood schools are. We've had great parent participation from a lot of the neighborhood elementary schools. Um, about keeping the magnets and you know we've had lots of conversation about keeping the magnet programs and the high achievement programs. Um, another interesting thing that we had is the conversation about diversity and the diversity needs to be strengthened and there are certain areas where the populations are homogeneous at the schools and all of those schools would really like to have more diversity because all of the kids learn. You know we have areas where we have all um, non-English speaking schools and we talked about when to be wonderful to have more children there who spoke English so the kids learn from kids who speak English. Similarly schools that have some of the schools that have a lot of special ed kids we talked about how wonderful it is that the other kids are very empathetic and what they gain from being in a really diverse population. So there's some real strength there and um, a lot of the principal and a lot of the PACs really emphasize that so that was really great. The other thing that came off of the survey was um, the need, and this has really been brought to the forefront um, by our hybrid learning, the need for um, equal technology and internet access across the unit, across the district. So that was a very strong point. I think that's coming out of today's um, situation. Next slide, please. Um, the other thing that, of course, you know, we asked a question on this survey, what were the most needed types of spaces? And um, of course, what came across the most was eliminating the trailers and doing additional classrooms. That became the major, and that is really the major function of our, our master plan, how to equalize the, the, the population across the district and provide the right, right size schools. Um, again, the second thing that people said were breakout spaces, a lot of conversation about collaboration spaces that would help um, teachers with, for, you know, give them the space to do 21st century learning, um, complement their STEM programs, things like that. We got a lot of that feedback. Then the other one was athletic venues, you know, making uh, equity across the athletic venues and support spaces across the district. And finally, common spaces, cafeterias that would serve the expanded enrollments. Those were sort of the major pieces that came off the online survey. So those of you who have other concerns, please put them on the survey so we can capture them too. Next slide, please. 
Um, just to show you an example, you all will see this. We will send this out to the principals in the PACs. This is what a facility condition assessment will look like. It will have all of the information they found, everything in the school that needs to be addressed, and there'll be some kind of easy graph to see life cycle costs and what needs to be addressed immediately. Next one. This is just a sample for you. Similarly, um, every school will have a, a educational suitability assessment. And again, there'll be rankings so that you see which are the most important things to address on these. These, as I say, will all be available to you come probably the end of March, beginning of April. Next one, please. And we do have a dashboard that's keeping track and this dashboard as we get it up and really running and everything people can get online can see it it will come through the website you can see day to day where we are how many of these um, schools we've walked through and in fact you can see how many of the packs we've met with how many of the principals we met with we are keeping track every time we meet with a pack or a principal every time we send out the minutes to them every time they return the minutes so we will have a really good compendium of when we have touched people and where we've touched them Next one, please. And this is eventually what it will look like when we have all of the ESA scores and all of the educational suitability assessment scores from all of those walkthroughs, all of those reports. You'll be able to see each school, the report, you know, what, how it ranked and then why it ranked how it did. You could go through the backup of this and see the things that we thought were strong and not strong and rated them against each other. This is all of this we are putting in the dashboard right now. It's not finished by any means, but it will be available to everybody in the district. Next one, please. Similarly, we're looking at the uh, special programs in school choice. We're looking at every region, what's in the region, how many kids are in those programs, what's offered, are they embedded in the school, are they countywide, or how are they um, subscribe to? Is it uh, a lottery? Is it home area first? Whatever. So we will catalog all of the special programs as we go through this too. And again, that report will be done by the end of March also. You can tell we have a lot going on in February and March. Got a lot of people doing a lot of things. And I just wanted to recap again, we are in the process. As you saw, we've talked to about 50 um, PACs and 50 principals. This is, we've heard some really great things, as I said, and these are sort of the biggest ideas that have come out of it. I mean, it's interesting, and you all know this, a lot of you who are at these old elementary schools, that the district has a number of small old elementary schools. And while people like the size of the schools, they've been added on to piecemeal, as you see in the next one. There are schools that have been added on to from 65, 67, 74, 2003. So there's a lot of sort of different kinds of systems in these schools that need to be addressed. And there are a lot of number of schools that have a number of trailers. I think there are 250 trailers across the district right now that we're addressing. And in those old schools, in those schools that sort of are 60s and 70s, some of them have not been upgraded. And we've heard a lot of complaints about the mechanical systems that we need to address in the master plan. And similarly, as I showed you before, we're looking at the special programs and looking at where they are, are the facilities match the programs? Do we need to re rearrange some of that? So. That's the sort of question, the feedback we've heard from the principals and the facts. Um, the major feedback we've done, obviously there, the most schools in the county are the elementary schools. So we've done the most kind of conversation with the elementary schools. And most of those are in small old 1960s, 1970s buildings and really do need, need new mechanical system. A lot of them have a number of trailers and we, you know, we'll look at, do you add to them? Do you consolidate them? Do you move children? You know, those are all things that we'll look at in the master plan and come to you with options and get your feedback on. You know, there'll be a number of sort of ways to address these issues and get rid of those trailers. Um, the other thing, a lot of conversation about providing a school that can complement 21st century learning, that would have breakout spaces, have meeting spaces, have conferencing spaces. And again, the old schools don't necessarily have these kinds of spaces. But I think, and I say to you, that I have been so impressed that you have the most dedicated, passionate teachers. Every one of these elementary school teachers thinks their school is by far the best, their parents are the best, their kids are the best. And I don't think you could wish for anything more. I mean, I think you could wish for better facilities, that's for sure, but you have fabulous, fabulous principals. Next slide, please. Again, um, if you guys just would keep putting in the, your things, your comments, 
I don't know, is this updated, John, or is this, I don't know. Keep putting in, please put in what you'd like to see um, from the master plan, because this is really important to us to see what your, what your priorities are. And again, I thank you. I think I'm going to turn it back over to Jared and let him close out and begin to address your questions. But please, I hope I answered most of your questions about our time frame. Again, we will come to you. We will see you in April. We will see you in May. We'll see you at the end of March. We'll see you at the end of April. We'll see you at the end of May. And between that, we will have meetings with each region to present our options. So thank you. Jerry, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Um, so we, we have um, we have been trying to respond to your question submitted uh, via the Q&A and we'll continue to do so uh, as I'm speaking. We did have some questions submitted in advance uh, via the website and um, I thought I would start with a, a few of those um, uh, to try to respond to those. Um, and um, one question that has come up quite a bit is Will redistricting be pursued in time for the 2021-22 school year? Um, and the answer to that question is no, not as part of this comprehensive master plan. Uh, this plan is really looking out, uh, you know, in the five plus year range and um, none of the, the options that we propose um, over the next several months um, would be implemented until uh, at least um, the following year. So um, this is all targeting kind of an early fall completion of the master plan process. And so we wouldn't engage in any, any uh, redistricting for that school year. Um, Uh, there have been a number of questions about uh, overcapacity schools and undercapacity schools. Um, and what we can say at this point is that uh, the, the master plan is intended to incorporate capacity and enrollment uh, along with demographic projections uh, for all regions of DeKalb County. So I know that uh, some of the questions speak to overcrowding in North DeKalb and um, great, uh, higher capacity in South DeKalb. Um, but we're going to be looking at all the regions um, and, and looking at, at scenarios where we can uh, make best use of district funds and facilities while maximizing the benefit to students, obviously. So in some cases, um, you know, consolidation or closure might be a recommended option. And in other cases, uh, some type of construction might be an option, but we are simply not at that point in the process. We're still in the information gathering phase. And, um, you know, we'll be able to present um, some of those findings uh, at the end of March once we've sort of completed this phase. And, and then we'll, we'll present even more detailed information as we move on into April. Um, uh, there are a number of questions about that came up along the way about uh, return to school, um, the impact of COVID on sort of in-person learning, and um, uh, the COVID questions are really, as, as Mr. Malouf mentioned, outside the scope of the CMP, except uh, where they might impact the use of, of uh, school facilities. Um, and so it's really kind of a tangential question that, that the district will be responding to um, separately uh, as a separate effort. Um, Jared, I had uh, one question on here um, that I saw kind of repeated in a number of ways uh, that I really would like to make sure that everyone feels comfortable who ha may have a student in different clusters or may have a different uh, student in different school areas, regions, et cetera, um, for various reasons. We would like for them to participate in both um, or one or however they feel uh, comfortable participating in in feedback. We have plenty of mechanisms for um, uh, multiple opportunities there. So uh, again, we encourage everyone to feel free uh, to give us feedback, um, not just from one, um, but from multiple regions and multiple clusters. Uh, the more feedback and input that we get from our stakeholders and the more engagement we have with our stakeholders gives us better direction on how to um, present options for for the Board of Education and the school system to move forward with this plan. So those are all great opportunities there. Yeah, and I would say, you know, it's one thing to participate in the live poll that we did tonight in the meeting, but really uh, the most productive way to engage 
um, is to complete the survey that's on the website. And in that case, you can uh, submit multiple responses depending because there's a there's an overall survey that's about the district as a whole, looking at the district as a whole. And then there's a secondary survey that's school specific. So you can go in, select one of the schools you're affiliated with, uh, fill out the, the, the survey for that school, and then go back and select whatever other school you're affiliated with and do the same thing. So um, we encourage you to do that. Um, it might be a little bit tedious in some cases, but um, it really does help us um, gather information and make sure that we're hearing from as many people as possible. You know, obviously, not everybody can attend uh, these town halls, and so that's one way that we're trying to make sure that um, we get feedback from lots of folks. And I should mention, um, we've had questions about how are we getting feedback from people who can't join an online tom, tom, excuse me, town hall or have difficulty accessing the surveys. Um, we will also be um, making other efforts using uh, mailers. And now that uh, school is going to be back in person, there will be flyers distributed. So um, you know, we're, we're trying to reach out in a variety of ways. And I should also note that the surveys on the website are translated into uh, multiple languages, I think at least five languages, if not more. So uh, hopefully that's not a barrier for folks. And please, uh, we rely on people who are at meetings like this to share this information and to make sure that your friends and other folks you know in your schools um, know about it and, and engage with us even if they can't uh, attend these meetings. Um, Jared, if I could follow up on that as well, I'm watching the um, Q&A and we have a number of folks who have uh, asked us to reach out to specific groups. Um, if you are on this um, town hall and you have a group that you would like for us to reach out to, uh, civic organizations, um, municipal groups, uh, community groups, uh, neighborhood groups, please uh, place in the chat those that information and we'll be glad to add it to our list. We also have a uh, an email set up on the website specifically for the CMP. Uh, so please feel free if, if you're not able to get it into the chat this evening, uh, send us that contact information. We want to make sure that we are uh, reaching out as best we can. And uh, again, uh, many of the uh, PACs and internal stakeholder groups, I have already had the uh, great opportunity to sit down and, and, um, and meet with them virtually. Uh, that's usually a pretty easy piece, especially when you've got a set meeting that we can get invited to uh, and get us on the agenda for a few minutes. So please feel free to put those in the chat and we'll collect those and and reach out to you. And if you have not heard from us, um, feel free to get into the CMP uh, portion of the website and email us at the CMP uh, address there. And you can see it up here on the screen uh, where it says sub submit questions. Um. There have been a number of questions about uh, the demographics and how those might be affected in enrollment projections and how those might be affected by the um, drop off in enrollment due to COVID. Um, I'm not an, a, a demographer and an expert in that area, and that's why we have Cropper on the team. Um, but I know that they are taking into account those those numbers and, and working to make sure that their projections are accurate in, um, in spite of the COVID drop off. Um, and so they will be able to provide more information on that uh, when we present our kind of demographic findings um, at our March meeting. We will also present um, all the different assessments, so the, the um, educational suitability assessments, the facility assessments, and um, the, the demography. There was another question on here um, about capacity and recommended student size and targets and standards. Our team is working currently to provide a more um, consistent and uh, constant number for us to work from. Uh, we have worked on that with Perkins and Will team and our internal uh, planning team. So yes, that that is coming out uh, in our in our future pieces. So that's that's part of the transparency I think people are looking for and part of the transparency that we want to make sure that we provide in what are we doing? How are we determining capacity? How are we determining uh, student size, classroom size targets and, and that information? So look for that as a forthcoming piece of this process. Um, 
there have been a couple of questions about how uh, teachers can weigh in in this process, and we certainly um, need and want feedback from teachers. Uh, in some cases, teachers uh, have participated as part of the, the PAC meetings that we've been uh, conducting and the PAC surveys, but also uh, teachers should feel free and, and we encourage teachers to participate uh, in the surveys um, on the website. Um, the survey is designed to elicit input from anybody who's affected by the school district, including uh, not just parents or, or people who are directly affected, but also community members are welcome to participate in it since um, kind of the future of the district really affects everyone in DeKalb County. Um, there've been a number of questions about sort of equity and, and I'll just say in general, we're looking at the, the options that we develop for the comprehensive master plan will look at all of these factors together. So capacity, enrollment projections, demographics, school choice, all of thing, these things will be uh, sort of put into the, 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 the various recommendations. And uh, as Superintendent uh, Watson Harris said at the beginning of this, equity is, is a, a, an important probably the primary thing that we'll be you know, looking at um, and trying to make recommendations. Um, and so uh, that's all I can say at this moment because we're not far enough along in that process to really say anything specific about what those options might be. Um, um, uh, Jared, I've got a great question here that relates to staff and uh, teachers in particular. Mm -hmm. um, while yes, we will poll uh, uh, staff members and teachers uh, separately and more specifically around uh, curriculum and instruction and how that interacts and intersects with our facilities. Um, we encourage anyone on the call uh, or anyone out there to fill out our general survey that we have out right now. There's two two general surveys, one uh, that is district wide look and the other one it is uh, that asks you to drill down a little bit to the school level, but we encourage anyone to fill those out and it is not um, limited to uh, non staff members. We encourage staff members to please take advantage of that as well. Great question. Um, and there was a question about how we bridge the gaps between older schools and newer ones and the, uh, and the questioner says there's no way that all the old schools can be replaced and um, you know, I don't want to speak out of term, but I don't think that we would ever uh, propose a scenario where every old school were replaced. I think some schools are in better condition than others, and so in some cases there'll be uh, options for um, performing maintenance or replacement of certain systems or parts of those buildings or even adding on to old buildings, which is a different thing than building a brand new building or demolishing an old building and building a brand new building. But as I said before, the the reason it's called the comprehensive master plan is because we are looking at all of those uh, potential options to, to come up with the best possible uh, scenario for for the district looking forward. Uh, here's a good question and I think um, there is a there is a, uh, uh, a couple questions around SPLOST um, and this is a good time to just briefly uh, talk about that. You know, we, we are coming to the close of the SPLOST 5 initiative in the next year and a half and we'll begin working uh, to look at the uh, hopefully a SPLOST 6 initiative. Um, one of the questions that's out there is that SPLOST vote did not include specific projects. Um, how, do, how will we move into um, how will we move into that in the future? Um, and the answer to that is is very uh, uh, specifically, this comprehensive master plan will always focus on what the overall plan is, and SPLOST will always be a funding mechanism for the overall plan. Um, as we approach SPLOST 6, um, the resolution itself may not have specific projects in it uh, in terms of a long uh, exhaustive list, but we really are working to do what's in the district's best interest to um, build out our facilities to follow, match, and support our curriculum and support our teaching and learning. And the SPLOS dollars that go behind that are what we use as one of the uh, funding sources for this overall plan. So SPLOS won't be part of this plan other than it is a uh, wonderful funding source that we've been able to take advantage of over the years.
Um, well, one other thing, and I and I failed to mention this. Part of what we will take from from this plan is the facility condition assessments and other uh, ed educational um, suitability assessments for our buildings, and that will inform any of the projects that we decide to put on put on the table going forward, whether that's a new facility, upgrades to facilities, or any kind of renovations and and upgrades and updates. Um. And then there there have been a number of questions about um, sort of optimal sizes uh, for schools, and um, we hear that and we we've we've uh, heard that from a number of different groups when we've met with the PACs and with the principals, and we we're very cognizant of the fact that different uh, size schools serve different communities, and and some communities prefer one size over another. Um, and so we, we will take that information into account. Um, we have not been given any specific targets of a certain size school. And I think in large part, uh, school sizes will be will be sort of the result of the planning process rather than sort of working towards a target size, if that makes sense. And we will be working with uh, curriculum and instruction uh, to also get their input on, on school sizes and, and how that how they see that in terms of its impact on um, the education of the students. No, you're on mute. My apologies. I think there's not one meeting that you go through where somebody doesn't do that. Um, so uh, I wanted to kind of wrap up with a with a uh, response to a number of these questions that have come in. First, the questions have been great. We appreciate um, the interest in, and the focus on making sure that we get this right and that we are doing the best job that we can to um, set the district up for a good future um, from a facility standpoint to support the excellent teaching and learning that goes on in the district. We all know that that's an extremely, extremely important piece, and we keep that focus on the curriculum instruction and the teaching and learning driving this process as the as the uh, cornerstone of what we do. Um, there are a number of specific questions in here that we will take uh, uh, related to past projects and future projects and, and work on answering those uh, in our offline Q&A pieces. Uh, we also want to continue having good feedback and could updates. So I encourage everyone to join us for our next town hall and follow along. And as long as you have questions in the process, please, please put those out for us. Um, we appreciate the work that Perkins and Will, Jacobs and Cropper GIS are doing. And uh, we appreciate the direction that our community input is giving to us. So I wanted to kind of close from our perspective on that and thank you all for the work that you're doing. And um, uh, before we wrap up, just encourage everyone to keep participating. Yeah, thank you everyone, everybody who attended tonight. And uh, like I said earlier, please uh, talk to your, your friends and, and your colleagues and make sure that um, they fill out the surveys and participate whenever they can and you can look forward to an invite to a uh, uh, our second town hall at the end of March. OK, thank you. Well, thank you, everyone, and uh, we will uh, talk to you all again soon.